So GPT-40 has just been released by OpenAI, but by now I'm sure you're already aware of this. So rather than running you through what this model is capable of like everyone already has, I'm going to talk to you about what exactly I think this model means for our future. So today we'll be answering the questions, what exactly can this model do in the real world, how long will it be until it starts taking jobs, and when will we see competition for this new type of model? Let's take a look into this. So GPT-40 has been made to be extremely fast, and this is no surprise because its purpose is for real-time audio generation, with OpenAI's voice model which sounds incredibly realistic and demonstrates a very high quality of emotion in the voice. So now that we've got that quick summary out of the way, what can this AI actually do in the real world? Well, to be honest, I think the answer to that question is about as far as your imagination can reach, but here I'm going to mention the most real use cases for GPT-40. So Straight off the bat when I saw this I was thinking about call centers, like when you need to call a company and talk to someone to get something sorted out, and usually what companies do is outsource this work to poorer countries, and that's obviously for the company's benefit of paying the workers less. But now given the quality of OpenAI's new voice model, it seems to me that this technology could easily be implemented in place of call centers, because we all know that there's nothing more annoying than trying to get a real human on the phone to sort something out, and then you get an automatic robotic voice that doesn't help at all, but OpenAI's voice model combined with GPT-40 just seems like a perfect combo for this type of work. Implementing GPT into call centers previously would have been a problem. Although it technically could have been possible, the people on the phone would have been waiting so long for the GPT to generate a response that it would likely drive many people away from the phone, so it really was not a viable option. This was evident in the introduction of Figure 1, the humanoid robot. With chat GPT-4 implemented inside of it, although it gave very quality responses, you had to wait a very long amount of time to get them. And although an extremely impressive introduction, it didn't feel natural like it should. Like can you imagine this robot with instant responses to what you ask and instant reactions to what you want it to do? This would be perfect if implemented into humanoid robots. And then one more very clear use case that I can see coming from this AI, and that would be using it as a tutor to learn things. OpenAI actually did do a demonstration of this use case. Looking at the triangle, which side do you think is the hypotenuse? I'm not totally sure. I think I think it might be this one, but I really am not sure. This side AC. Although I will say I don't know the age of this boy, but by looking at him, he should have been a lot better at trig than that. So either he is seriously understudying or just pretending like he didn't know it for the video. But the video did demonstrate a very real use case, because although true that you could use GPT-4 to help you learn things, it's far more natural in this new form, where you can talk and ask questions and GPT is watching you while you do things. It really does make the experience significantly better, and that factor is also the reason we saw loads of stocks plummet after this announcement. For example, Duolingo stock which dropped down to $179. That's not to say that this stock can't get back on its feet, but I think it shows how people are thinking. Why bother with something like Duolingo when you can just talk to your own personal language tutor? So GPT-40 is going to inevitably start taking some jobs, but when will we start to see this change happening in real time? It's hard exactly to put a number on this, but I don't think we'll be waiting long at all to see this happening, because I know loads of companies are going to see this, and they're going to be seeing dollar signs, because they know this can save them money by reducing human labour. So honestly, I would just give it a few months until we at least start seeing a few examples here. Apple and OpenAI are in the works of making a deal to bring AI to the iPhone, and it's very likely that this will include the GPT-40, because it's basically what Siri was imagined to look like in an ideal world. So then, is there any real competition to this? Well, funnily enough, just today Google announced their voice model, and although it would otherwise be a very impressive advancement, due to OpenAI's GPT-40 announcement, it doesn't seem quite as impressive in comparison, and it's very likely that this was no coincidence, OpenAI's event being one day before Google's to announce essentially the same product. Because just two hours before OpenAI's event, Google posted a video showing their voice model at work. OpenAI 
AI essentially forced Google's hand, so definitely a major loss for Google, as well as that there are some other good voice models like Pi where you can choose from up to 6 voices, but similarly to Google it does not beat GPT-40, but other than that I'm sure that other companies will now start releasing their voice models, as it's not uncommon for other companies making AI to follow closely behind OpenAI, and this is likely because they are a step ahead at the moment, but do leave a comment as I'm interested to know what you guys think about all this, and if you're still listening I really appreciate you, like and subscribe if you can, it really helps me out, thanks for watching.